Hello church, the name of today's devotional is How King David Made Decisions. We find this in 2 Samuel chapter 7. I'll read the first five verses. It says, Now when the king lived in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? And the chapter goes on to describe that God is saying, No, David, you're not going to build me a house, but your son who comes after you will build a house for me. And I love, I love the way David makes this decision here. He, David has a desire. He has an idea. He has a thought, you know, to do something for God. And he asks Nathan, and Nathan says, go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. And that's a very interesting phrase. Nathan doesn't say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out, and I'm going to let you know if this is a good idea. He says, God's with you. Your heart is right. So go do whatever is in your heart. Romans 12, 2, we love to quote this verse, but we love to quote just the first half of the verse, you know, do not be conformed to, to this world. But the second half is also very interesting because it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. It's usually where we stop. But it goes on to say that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So, God tells us directly in his word, the Bible tells us that the will of God for us is anything that is good, acceptable, and perfect. That's it. Uh, We're not called to figure out some mysterious will of God, you know, like, what is the will of God for me? Like, where does, what career has God destined for me and my, what is his will? God says anything that's good, acceptable, perfect. If it's good and acceptable and perfect, then that is the will of God for you. And we're called to to determine or to discern, in other words, to understand what is God's will, what is good and acceptable and perfect, through testing. And I love this word because testing implies, it implies error and trial. It means trying, like, okay, let me try this. Uh, No, I didn't like that field or I don't like medicine, you know, And, and so I don't like it. So it's not good for me. It's not good for me. So it's so yeah, that's probably not God's will for me, right? It's it's testing means error and trial, it means asking questions. Testing means seeking and thinking and using our mind like Romans 12 2 says. Is it good? Is this good? Is this acceptable? Is this perfect? Is this clean? Do, uh, and if the answer is yes, then yeah, it's God's will for us. It's that simple, and that's what David did. David, he had a desire, he had a desire in his heart. He was right with God, and we know that because Nathan says the Lord was with him, right? He was right with God. The next thing he did was that he went and consulted. He asked David, uh, he asked Nathan, like God's representative at that time. And for us, what that translates to is praying to God. We have the Holy Spirit that indwells within us. We have direct access to God, so we can ask God, God, what do you think about this? And I think it's also wise to seek counsel from those who are close to God, right? If it's a spiritual question or it's some life decision, ask others who are close to God and say, hey, what do you think about this? Or if it's some kind of very specific question about some some field, you ask an expert in that field, go to them, seek that counsel, try to understand if it's good, acceptable, perfect. And then Nathan tells him, yeah, it's a good idea, go for it. But this is where, this is the caveat, right, that makes us as Christians different. God responded to Nathan saying, go tell David that he should not do this. So the last step in our decision making is not just to discern what is good and acceptable and perfect, but also to be open to God's leading, right? Uh, To be open to having God intervene and tell us, no, 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 it might look good, it might look acceptable and perfect in this moment, but but I don't want you to do this, right? And, And it's just amazing how 
David had a desire, started going for it, but then he was also open to God intervening in, you know, in a special case and say, no, 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 I don't want you to go down this road. I don't want you to go down this path. Your son will do that and I will bless you and all of that. So don't worry about it. So the last step was being open. And notice that God didn't condemn David for sitting there, for, for not sitting there and just waiting until he finally gets a sign from heaven of what he should do. Because sitting there and not doing anything is in itself doing something, right? You're still always doing something, even if you're doing nothing. And doing nothing might be not God's will for you, right? So God didn't condemn David for saying, how dare you go and, you know, started trying to build that house until I gave you a sign from heaven. He says, no, 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 you were doing the what is good. I'm with you. You have a great relationship with me. You were doing that, but I know what's better for you, so I intervened and I told you, no, 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 it's better for you not to do this. Uh, I like what some preachers, you know, when they, when they talk about this topic, they say, you know what? Love God and do what you want, right? Just love God and do what you want. As long as your love for God is there and that means your desires are going to be right and true and good. And I'm not talking about fleshly desires, but the, flesh, the desires of the spirit, right? The desires that God places in your heart. Just love God, do what you want, and don't complicate it. And if God wants to lead you in a different direction, he will make that clear, just like he did to David through Nathan. Uh, I have a great personal example of a similar situation. I remember... I believe it was 2016 and I just had a desire, you know, I wanted to go to Israel. I'm like, I want to go to the land of the Bible. I want to go see just this whole place from with my own eyes. You know, I'm always reading about it, I'm reading about it, but I want to I want to see it, how it actually looks like. And I started praying about it and I didn't get any signs. I didn't get any confirmations. Like, I'm like, God, should I do this? Should I not do it? I didn't get a yes. <laughs> I didn't get a no. I didn't get anything, you know? And it was hard, right? Um, uh, and and here was the thing. The trip was relatively expensive uh, because it was during like travel season. So everything was more expensive. And we needed 42 people to go. Uh, on this trip, right? Or else it would have been even more expensive. And so I was praying about it this entire time. I was collecting up money. I was uh, looking for people that would want to join. And a lot of people wa wanted to go, but then a lot of people couldn't go for understandable reasons. And it was just this, it was a total uphill battle until the very, very end, like until we got up on to, onto the plane, right, uh, to, to fly there. And and I, I kept praying uh, all the time and I just kept saying, God, is this your will? Is this your will? And it was blank the entire time. There was no like, yes, there was no, no. There was, it was just complete blankness. And, and it was hard and I wanted to quit a lot of the times during this whole planning session. I'm like, it's just gonna be so much easier just to say, you know what guys, let's call it off. We haven't paid the deposit yet. And I had so much doubt this entire time as well because a lot of my friends were telling me like, man, I could go to Hawaii for two weeks for this price or I could go to Mexico for four weeks, uh, you know, for this price. So it was, it was difficult, um, but through God's grace, we got through it. We came there and looking back, I mean, I can, that was hands down the best trip in my life, just on so many levels. And I, I see that everybody just loved this trip and it was edifying and it built people up. Um, we learned a lot. And in fact, it's amazing because actually somebody got saved on that trip. Like somebody came to know the Lord truly, you know, a true relationship with God. And that alone makes that entire trip and all the effort and the whole uphill battle totally worth it for me. You know, completely worth it. I had a good desire. I gave it to God constantly. I just kept bringing it to him. I was open for him to lead me and to point me. But at the same time, I just kept moving in that direction. I just kept moving in what seemed to be good. Not easy, but good. And God blessed it. Um, and and I just, I'm so thankful to him that he gave me just the right amount of strength to keep going through that. So in conclusion, 
the way David made decisions, or at least what we see here, is that he, you know, we're called to test, so that to seek, to, to think, to understand what is good, what is acceptable, what is perfect, just like David thought, hey, it's, it's good to have a house for the Lord, right? To surrender it to God, to, to ask for advice, to pray, to seek from those who are close to God, to be open for Him to guide us in a specific direction, and just to keep moving. Just go for it and just be open for God to direct you. May God bless us and may we glorify him with our decisions in our life. God bless.